Okay, so um, it happens in threes, right? Pete Carroll, Nick Saban, and um, Bill Belichick, right? It happens in threes. Carroll's the only one that's a crazy surprise. Still surprising of Saban, although um, who was it who was on Fox Sports Radio to start the year? They had lost to Texas. There were some stories about him retiring, and they did a segment going, you know, it kind of makes sense. Oh, that was me. That was me. Um, So I want to get to the Belichick thing upcoming. We all agree Bill Belichick was fired, right? It's like no one wants to say he was fired, but him moving on two days after he said, hey, I'm still under contract, you know, and I'd consider, you know, changing some some duties with the front office. Like, it's just, uh, I guess you don't want to be the guy that fires Bill Belichick. And part of the why Bill Belichick said it was he wants to get every penny that's on his contract that was remaining. But let's be honest, Bill Belichick was fired today. Correct, Jay Stu? Like, is there any dispute in that? It certainly looks like it, yeah. Fire, are you okay with that? Yep. Okay. So, yeah, like, look, this is a big boy show. Here's the thing. I actually think the most interesting thing in sports, I'm talking about interesting, is not, oh, Bill Belichick was great. Is he the greatest coach ever? Like, that's not interesting to me. We can do that show in the summer. Okay, I have. We usually do this for the midway where we go around. I want to ask you, Dan Byer, what do you think the most interesting? Now, it doesn't. Have, it can be anything. If you were going to do the sports show you want to do today, what would be the thing that you think is most interesting? Put me on the spot, though. No, okay, no, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll share with you All mine, right. and you tell me if it if it's it, more interesting than talking about why Saban would retire if Belichick because co- I think it's why Saban would retire does it have to do with the landscape of the sport or what it is, or should Bill Belichick coach again, right, or who replaces Belichick or the awkward interactions between the two, or you, have you ever had to try and play nice with somebody that you couldn't stand, right? I mean, those are all reasonable topics. Okay, but Chris Perfett, I respect your opinion. You too, Jay Stu and, and Dan Byer. I think the most interesting thing is, like, do you take the Alabama job? Belichick? No, I'm Ooh. just saying any, any of these coaches, do you take the Alabama job? Because supposedly Dan Lanning, I don't know if he ever went there, whatever. They post, he ain't going anywhere. Dan Lanning's not taking it. And you're like, the Oregon coach turned down the Alabama job? And I just I think this is a very real conversation. Look, if we look at the target demo of people who listen to sports radio, it does skew male. But even even women who listen, like most people are professionals and they change jobs and you have to decide, do I leave a job? Do I what about this job? And these jobs are really interesting. And I I think it's one of those like. To me, when I woke up today and I was like, man, I flew across the country. All I could think about was I want to talk about who should and who should not take this job. Because remember, you're following, no matter how, what you think of Saban or how good they actually were this year or how they found a way to sneak into the playoffs and George was better and Texas was a lot better. This was kind of a down year or whatever. You're replacing God himself. And Saban has played the whole thing perfectly, right? Like, he never really did anything to say, like, hey, I'm better than Bear Bryant. But let's be honest, his run was better than Bear Bryant's. Right? Don't get me wrong, Alabama fan. I'm not saying blasphemous thing about the houndstooth, houndstooth fedora wearing great ball coach. Okay, but a little different now, a little bit more to manage. Um, Just a little bit more competitive. And instead of winning national championships that are awarded by the Tuscaloosa News, yes, Alabama has national championships that were awarded by the Tuscaloosa News. You have to actually do it on the football field. 
So you're replacing God himself. And I think it's really interesting. Because anytime, you know, you'd go to think about a job, you do the pros and cons thing. Right? And there's a lot of cons to the job outside of you're replacing him. So I, I think if you go through this stuff, it's like Kirby Smart played at Georgia, but he was once there and he won back-to-back national championships. I would never leave the Georgia job for the Alabama job. Ever. Ever. Because you build your own legacy. And you can take the, the, the torch from Saban and make it your league. Right? You're the University of Georgia. And you, they were always close with Mark Richt, and now they've crossed over that threshold, and now they're the big dogs in the conference, and it's a bigger state with more players, and they got tons of money. Why, why would you what, – what would cause you to leave it? Dabo is interesting. And, you know, you got people chanting anybody but Dabo, which is also fascinating. It just shows how people view the football rivalries, not even realizing, like, Dabo Sweeney's an Alabama guy. But do you, is Clemson a sinking ship, or is that easier to fix than replacing Saban? Like, I, I don't know. Jay Stu, do you think the Belichick conversation is more interesting than the Saban conversation? I don't. Okay. Uh, but that's me. Um, but the odds have come out for the replacement of Saban. Okay, so, so hit me with the top five. And, and Byer, hop in because you know this sport as well as I do. Okay, Perfect, you can t- you you as well. Uh, give me give me the give me the give me the five names. Um, at minus one fifty is Kalen DeBoer. Okay. Mike Norvell is a plus one fifty. Okay, that's Florida State's coach. This is according to Bet Online, by the way. Yep. S- Steve Sarkisian, Sarkisian plus twenty plus one seventy five. Okay. Lane Kiffin plus five hundred, and then Dabo Swinney at plus twenty five hundred. Can you imagine if Lane Kiffin got that job? I mean, blessed by the gods to fall fall upwards with just about every job outside of the Florida Atlantic job. You know, the only guy that should take that job that's on that list is Lane Kiffin. And even then, I don't know, you're at Ole Miss. You're making a gang of money. I don't know. Thing- yeah, I mean, I, I don't, go, go ahead, Byer. No, I, oh, it's I was, Chris. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. I think the thing that makes this Alabama job so interesting is that Saban, he, it, the job he did off the field is almost more interesting than the job he did on the field. Like I think some of us have seen those Alabama organizational charts. It, it is not, it is not uh, out of this park to say that Alabama dealing with the booster groups that are all competing against each other, all the different interest groups that are at that program. It would make a Byzantine emperor weep. Like it, you, you have to be someone. Nick Saban is probably qualified to be president of the United States for how many parties he had to deal with all at his back and to put them all on the same page for all those years. And that's the job you're asking anyone to take up. And oh, by the way, if you don't win right out of the gate, all of those groups are probably going to be at your back almost immediately. Like Sarkeesian is probably the most qualified for that given. Texas is probably the most similar, but do you really want to leave? Texas probably has more resources oh, than not, Alabama. Not probably does. Does it's it's the better job of the blue bloods. Yeah, I mean, I, there's there's and there's also more to it than that. Like, like Kalen DeBoer should not take that job. Just do not take that job. You know, because w- what happens is you. And it's really hard when you're a guy. We all have you when you're competitive in sports. We have these egos, and right, he was at Indiana. Like Indiana has no shot to ever really compete. They've been to one Rose Bowl ever. Right, you go to University of Washington, and I mean, this is their shot. And every five or six years, if you do it right, you know, you you're going to be able to get into the playoff. But the reality is, like, it's got to take a lot of things, got to be really aligned. You know, remember, yes, they were good this year, but USC was a disaster. Okay? USC was, and, and, USC, and USC is not coached by a disaster. Like, that guy knows what he's doing, pretty good org. Like, 
the the likelihood that they're better than USC in most given years is 10%, 15%. It's just the reality of it. Proximity to talent, resources, history, all that stuff. And, like, Lincoln knows what he's doing. He'll he'll figure out the defense. He'll figure it out. Um, But, like, I was thinking about this, and it's one of those, you know, look, everyone, all of us with our, our egos were like, I could be the king of college football. What would it be like to have that amount of resources? What would it be like to be the coach at Alabama? It should be known that that program went 20 years in the desert, in the abyss. Somewhere at ESPN Radio Boys, there's a tape of me coming on with Cowherd on his show saying, I thought Alabama is a great job, and when they hired Saban, he's the right guy, he's going to win. That's a real thing. And because I had visited there when I was a basketball player and transferring from Notre Dame, I was sitting out at junior college, I visited there, and they weren't very good. And the truth is, they wouldn't have fired Mike Shula had he landed Tim Tebow. Tebow is down to Florida and Alabama. And Tebow loved Mike Shula. Had they gotten Tim Tebow, he would have stayed as coach, and who knows what would have happened. Remember, they, there was a... Before they hired Saban, they were going to hire Rich Rodriguez, who was at West Virginia. Turned down the job. They also went through, um, uh, what was the coach of Washington State buyer who they hired, who got fired before Mike coaching Price. a game? Mike Price. They hired Mike Price from Washington State, and he had a, is it a tryst? Is that what they call it? Right? With a woman and a golf tournament. And then she ran up the room's charge on a, like, a, like ran up the, the hotel room bill. And that's how everybody found out about it. And the, the story was, uh, he was saying, it's rolling, baby. Roll Tide is rolling, baby. Right? You guys, do you, we all are old enough to remember this story. Yes. So there, there's the, you can suck at Alabama. If you're taking the Alabama job, okay, you're taking it for three reasons. One, to get paid. Because you get a lot of money. Two, because you want to shot the brass ring. And three, because you know you're going to get fired. So you only take it if you're at a place where you really have no chance to compete. And to compete at the very, very top. And you're, you're, it just frustrates you to all hell. It's like the only reason. Or if it's you've been doing a long time and you want one last shot at the brass ring. Other than that, it's, it, it, it doesn't serve any purpose because you're never going to live up to the expectations set by your predecessor. It is an incredibly hard job, and it's gotten harder with Texas and Oklahoma coming into the league. As you pointed out, Chris, now you got one school with more resources and another school with not the same tradition, but Oklahoma has been, in the last 20 years in college football, has been... Uh, it, yeah, again, b- b- because before Saban got there, Oklahoma was winning and won a national championship. They've been as successful. Not, you know, not the six national titles. They got one in the last 23 years. The job's gotten harder, plus you have the shadow of Saban and the expectations of Saban. Um, and now, the playoff expanding makes it so that you don't have to win the league every year, but they're not used to... Anybody in that SEC is going to – the fans are going to be dealing with the fact that somebody's coming home with four or five losses in a given year that's not used to having four or five losses. The downside, the, up, the upside is there'll be somebody with three losses that'll get into the college football playoff that never would have had a chance before. But you expand the college football playoff to 12 teams, you put three or four SEC teams in it, and what that really means is – Everybody who doesn't make the college football playoff out of those SEC programs is close to or probably going to get fired. That's a job that you absolutely want them to call and kick the tires on and act like you might be interested for a second and then claim loyalty, redo your contract, and stay right where you are. Well, the leading candidate, as was reported yesterday, was Dan Lanning, and I'll give you credit for this, too. I think back in September, remember when Lanny came out, there was some story 
about him being linked to a job and he didn't want to leverage uh, Oregon for more money. And he, he, he went on this impassioned speech about it. And then you did a segment basically saying that Dan Lanning is a guy in that situation who probably will stay around. And yesterday he, he kind of confirmed it. This morning he went on, went on ESPN and gave this reasoning. Getting your name put in the conversation speaks to what we're doing right here, right now. But yeah, this decision has been made for me since I took this job. You know, I love what we have here. I love the support, the administration I have. I mean, we, we've we got the things built to where we could be that that team. And um, we just got to continue to take, you know, steps in that direction to get where we want to be. Well, what what's held Oregon back from being a, an elite job in the past? It's one thing. Buyer, you want to you want to throw it out there? It's all you, Doug. Location, location, location. Okay, there's not enough players in Oregon, right? There's just not. Now, when they were when they were pre, when Chip Kelly had them competing, remember they had Willie Lyles and they were bringing in guys from Texas because they were cheating, <laughs> right? They were they were. And the way of cheating back then was like you know you had a guy in Texas who had a recruiting thing or whatever and you pay him a hundred grand for his recruiting thing and you know I don't know what happened to that money that money got filtered to the kids or to the handlers of the kids and that's how they got some of those players but you you couldn't get a kid to go from Texas or Florida or California to Oregon like willfully on his own all that's changed with NIL if you have the money. Now, all of a sudden, all those facilities, resources, Nike stuff, TV, now it all works. And, oh, yeah, by the way, like, they're going into a league. They're not going into the SEC. And I'm not saying the Big Ten's going to be easy. It'd be hard with travel, but easier for them because they're a team built with great speed and, honestly, because of his predecessor, they're really good up front. They're a tough physical group, and he's coaching the SEC. Like, he knows what it looks like. Yeah, I, I – and – you know they don't have to win the Big Ten to get into the playoff. They don't have to win the Big Ten for him to keep his job. You know if if the idea is to be in the Hall of in, if if you coach to be in the College Football Hall of Fame, you probably take the Alabama job. You got a better shot of more immediately and more consistently competing for it. But he's a young guy. You're going to get fired from that job. You're taking that job to get fired. Because there's no way you're ever going to live up to Saban. It just doesn't happen. doesn't happen. Look at UCLA basketball since John Wooden. Larry Brown was there. They go to a Final Four. They couldn't wait to get rid of him. Jim Herrick, they want to fire every year, including had they lost to Missouri on Tyus Edney's length of the court before they won the national championship, they were going to fire him. They fired him shortly thereafter. For fudging some expense reports on a recruiting visit. Like, what? And, and, and this is also your point, Chris, which you didn't make. The off the field was more impressive than the on the field. Not, not just in the booster stuff. Like, it, Urban Meyer had, had every bit the career of Saban. But if you say Urban Meyer, because Urban Meyer would make a lot of sense there. Like, if I'm Urban Meyer, I'm sitting there going, like, I'm going to go down there win a national championship. Then I won a couple at Florida, and I won one in Ohio State, and I had an undefeated season at, at Utah, and I turned around Bowling Green, and now I win in Alabama, and I'm in any conversation. Like, Urban Meyer makes sense, but if you say Urban Meyer, like, oh, he recruits criminals. Like, I, and look, I, I don't – do we think that Alabama had all choir boys? Do we think all those guys were in bed at 10 o'clock, milk and cookies? No! What do all those staff members do? They make sure that everybody is in line, that they step out of line, nobody finds out about it. I don't know. I just think it's a really, a very relatable thing in that there are jobs, and I've been there. There are jobs that if you say it to somebody, they're like, oh, you got to take that. And then you're like, and some that I've taken and some that I haven't, but that job that you have to take because your ego says you got to take it because it's not coming back around and it's the brass ring and the, if it doesn't fit your life, if you're happy where you are and, oh yeah, by the way, all these guys are making a crap ton of money, right? Any of those guys in that conversation are making upwards of $3 million a year to coach football. They're good. Hey, they're good. 
it's just a fascinating thing on do you take it or do you not take it? 